Hi guys, welcome back to another video. In this video, I want to show you my tree tomato. The other common name of tree tomato um, is tamarillo, and I don't like calling it tamarillo only because it, I always get it mixed up in my head with this other plant, tomatillo, that is actually in the same family, looks kind of similar. Well, not that similar, honestly, but I can totally see sometimes people may confuse them. So, I like calling tree tomato. The scientific name is Solana betaceum. Being a Solanum, you can probably already guess it's in the Solanaceae, the eggplant family. The eggplant family has a lot of important food crops such as um, tomatoes, potatoes. It also has a lot of really ornamental species such as Brugmansia. Happens to be one of my personal favorite. Um, so this, in my opinion, actually has the characteristics of both. It bears a great tasty fruit and it also is sort of ornamental. So my story with this plant was I never knew this plant existed until maybe half a year ago. I saw this plant on a video of some greenhouse's website and was and they described it as like um, I forgot the word they used. They probably describe it as a combination of taste of tomatoes, custard, guava, something like that. And I was like, oh wow, that sounds amazing. Let me try it. Um, so I went to this greenhouse. I saw this plant. Um, this plant was maybe um, three, two to three meters tall. It wasn't that tall, and it was heavily, heavily fruiting. I can see those egg-shaped fruit hanging off of those branches that are just deep burgundy red with purple stripes on them. It was gorgeous. So I couldn't help but of course got this plant and here it is. It has been maybe, I think I got it in November, it's March now. So maybe four, five months or so since I got this plant. And you know, in the winter of New England and US, it's not the most sunny place, but it actually has done pretty well. I got it as a you know small plant in a small container. But usually the plant itself will grow as a single trunked tree or shrub if you grow it from seeds. And then when it reaches um, maybe one and a half, two meters tall, it will start branching out. And when it starts to branch out, it will flower. That sort of reminds me of the growth habit of Brugmansia, which is also, you know, it start with a single trunk and then it will do this classic Y thing, basic, basically forks and it just keeps forking. So that's sort of similar in, my, in this species as well. Uh, once they start to branch, it will start to flower, at least in my experience. Um, so I got my plant though. It's grown from a cutting, I believe, which is why it's not as upright. And you can see that it started branching pretty early. Like here's one branch and there's, there's more up there. Um, the same with this side, um, the same with this side as well. Like you see the branch here. So if you don't want it to, to get super tall or if you grow it in containers or want to just keep it shrubby, grow it from cuttings, don't grow it from seed. And um, the leaves are, so that's a habit of the plant. It's a shrub that gets a few meters tall, um, but it also can be shorter if you grow it from cuttings. And in terms of the plant itself, it has this velvety leaf that's really beautiful. And it's about a little bit over the size of my palm, so it's definitely not a space saver if you are, um, if you have very limited space. Um, but it's worth it if you have any space for it, I highly recommend it. Um, and also, this leaf, I was really worried it will be susceptible, susceptible to spider mites. I have a lot of spider mites in my apartment, but so far, fingers crossed, um, or knock on wood, so far, nothing has happened. Um, there is no spider mite on this plant. That is that is just amazing because my Brugmansia gets decimated by spider mites every single winter. And this one, the leaf actually has a pretty pungent smell if you rub the leaf or if you just gently brush against it, which was one of the other reasons I find it interesting because you know, despite it being pungent, it's not a pleasant smell. I find it fascinating that just it has, it has a smell. Um, so, and moving on to the flowers, the flowers are usually um, born on those, um, let me see if I can find a good lighting for it. Um, 
on those branches that are hanging upside down. Um, the flower looks pretty typical for a solanum. Actually, I have one that is not typically, it's not hanging upside down, but here it is. It looks a lot like a tomato flower, which is, you know, not unexpected. And the flower has a really sweet scent. It reminds me a lot of Carolina Jasmine, the um, Gelsimium Sempervirens. It smells sweet, um, but it's not overly sweet like Osmanthus. I love Osmanthus, by the way, there's nothing against it. It's not overly sweet, but it doesn't travel very far, so I can only really smell it when I stick my nose to it. But after the flower is set, um, after the flower is spent, it will set fruit, like here. Uh, let me find an easier to access one so I can, I can be more comfortable instead of just bending this whole time. Um, okay, so I don't know if the lighting works. Well, hopefully it does. Um, so you see the flower are arranged in the pattern of like there's oh, this leaf. Um, there's one to the right, there's another one to the left that actually dropped, like you see the scar here, and then another one to the right, another to the left, sort of this alternating alternating pattern. And um, maybe you can sort of see that on this new branch, um, on this new um, inflorescence. And after the flower is spent on the left, this is an unopened flower. This is a very, very young fruit that might be um, a week and a half, two weeks old. It kept dropping fruits um, actually for a long time. My theory was that um, the plant wasn't big enough to support all those fruits, so it just kept dropping. And finally, I have two fruit set, one here, one over there that you just saw. And the fruit is, again, only about two weeks old. And today is... It went out of focus, I'm sorry. And today is... March 13th, 2023, and I will film another video when the fruit, hopefully when it's um, big enough, and uh, I'll put those two videos together um, so you can see the progress. But yeah, that's the fruit, and the fruit does have a kind of a combination of tomato, passion fruit, um, and some tropical flavors in it. It's always really hard to describe flavors, but in my opinion, it just tastes like a really really um, strongly flavored tomato it's like tomato on steroids i don't know about your experience i've always most of the time find the tomatoes at um, groceries really disappointing they don't really taste like much and so which was another reason i loved tree tomato it just reminds me i'm like i want tomato flavors i want tomato on steroids give me a lot of tomato flavor and i got this plant and apparently this plant is grown a lot um, in New Zealand, being of course it's native to South America. Um, and I have also been reading and I think people say that it's a subtropical shrub, but if you grow it in this tropical lowlands, it actually doesn't flower as well, which might be one of the reasons it grows so well in New Zealand. Um, I can't really testify to any of those myself, but uh, rest assured, this is a gorgeous plant. Um, it does well in containers and it flowers well in containers as well. Look, here are more flowers. Um, and there's a few more. So yeah, really, it just like growing tomato, um, despite it's, it's more interesting. And um, yeah, I think that's all I have for now. Oh, one more thing. Um, of course, being a subtropical shrub and um, it likes more sun than shade so do provide more sun if you can and hopefully those flower those um, fruits will ripen in a couple months I I think we'll see um, the spring is almost here I'm gonna move the plant outside and hopefully the, the fruit can survive all the birds all the nature thingies and if it does I will make another video and hopefully I can talk more about this plant later. Alright, um, thanks for watching. Have a great one.